What's up, Greek Nation? It's Coach Abel for your weekly updates. This is for players and parents. Make sure we're all focused in because this is the biggest week of the summer so far. Here's our agenda, our talking points. This video is going to be a little bit longer than the ones we've done over the past few weeks, but only because there's quite a bit uh, that we need to discuss. So let's go ahead and, and delve right into it since school does start officially on Tuesday. Stuff here on the left, the back to school info. Uh, this is things that have been discussed before. Uh, again, if you're having any issues with, with uh, contact information, if there are any, any, any issues with technology, give me a call. Uh, I can help you out with those. Uh, your players can can seek out the help of their position coaches as well. All these guys have been kind of coached up in these things. They should know what's going on. <clears throat> uh, NTI 2.0. Uh, this is going to look drastically different than what NT, NTI looked like in March. And that's what we all need to realize is that this is not going to be March NTI. That's good for you as parents, which mean, it means that the kids are going to be held more accountable. They're actually going to be learning some things this time. It's bad for our pl our, our players and, and students because I don't I think we are going to see that these guys expect things to be like they were at the end of last school year. And that is completely false. Uh, this is going to be a little more difficult for them. Not impossible by any means. It's very manageable, but it's going to be very different. And that's something that we need to to uh, make sure that's communicated. Uh, they should have received schedules. They should have received a, a packet of information at their houses. Um, if you haven't, again, please make sure that your your contact information is updated, and feel free to call the school and request that stuff in paper form. Okay. Let's talk about what NTI 2.0 looks like. Okay, as I said before, this is not March 2020 NTI. In March, they were expected to log in, maybe turn in an assignment here and there. Um, that was pretty much it. And and quite frankly, it was it was a joke. Uh, but in defense of everybody, no one really knew how long we were going to be in NTI, so no one knew what to expect. But we now know we we know uh, you know kind of what we should expect this time and we know that we're not going to be in school at least for for the first six to 12 weeks and, and again if i'm being honest i don't see us being back to toronto at the earliest fall break with that said this means that this is serious we've got to be better in nti 2.0 than we were last time <clears throat> they will be expected to log in daily they will be expected to turn in work um, each class assigns about one or two hours of work per week but again, let's let's be clear that that one or two hours differs from from player to player. Some guys are going to work through that stuff and, and and get through their material at a quicker pace than other guys will. Um, but it, at most, if a kid has seven classes and you have two hours of work in each class, that's 14 hours of work. And that's not necessarily going to be the same thing week to week. There might be a few weeks where a teacher only is assigning one or two assignments. Um, it just really just depends and it's going to vary. Okay. Communication is key to success in this situation. We have got to stay on our, our, our boys about making sure they're communicating with their, their teachers. And the same applies with you all as well. If you guys are, are frustrated, if, if things aren't going the way that you, you think they should, if you are lost, confused, uh, communicate that. Whether, whether it's to myself or, or a teacher or the, or the administration, does not matter. Make sure that you're, you're expressing those views. Uh, that way we can kind of... Uh, make sure these problems don't become bigger problems okay we'll talk about what synchro synchronous and asynchronous means here in a second um the players the students will take place uh will have academic advising take place with them that just tells them where they're at what they need to be doing um and it's also going to be a time for, for you guys to get caught up google classroom will send you guys updates relatively regularly uh, again, provided that your contact information is updated, your phone number and your email are up to date in the campus. Uh, last thing I'll say before we get into the, <clears throat> the schedules, um, a lot of our guys have jobs, they're working now, and that's great. Uh, but it's important to, to understand, and I'm sure you guys agree, that job uh, is not as important as school. Um, doesn't mean they can't work, they can, but some of these employers, some of these businesses are really taking advantage of this NTI, and I don't like it at all. Um, no player should be working during the time they should they should be in school. OK, um, I've, there are child labor laws against that. Um, they shouldn't be working more than six hours on any school night. They shouldn't be working past 10 o'clock on any school night. Um, and frankly, they shouldn't be scheduled to work before noon on any school day. 
Uh, a lot of these employers are teaching, are, are treating this as though school is not in session and that is completely false. We are very much in session starting tomorrow. If <clears throat> you, your son, if you, the player, need, need help navigating that, need help trying to talk to your boss about it, let me know. That's part of my job at Fern Creek. We'll discuss it, okay? All right. <clears throat> synchronous versus asynchronous. Synchronous means you are logged in with the teacher at that time. So from 9.30 to, to, to essentially 12.15 daily, our guys need to be on their Chromebooks, logged in, FaceTiming with their teachers, Google Meet, Zoom, whatever we're going to call it. Uh, that's, the, that's, that's class. That's class time, okay? Uh, as you can see, you have, they, the kids have class time on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday is that time where I've advised the kids to, to use the time either to work. That's your working day. You know, if I'm a parent, I'm going to let my kid work 20 hours a week, twice on the weekends, eight hour shifts and maybe a four hour shift during the week. OK. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the time, but the green times is when they should be logged on in a class. OK. The yellow time is they call it asynchronous. And that's pretty much they can do things whenever they have the time to do so. There's not you know, this is just a model. They don't have to be logged in the first period. Uh, but asynchronous is going to be, you know, the teacher assigns a reading assignment. They assign a, a Google quiz. They want the guys to watch a, a video online and, and to respond to some questions. That's the stuff in the yellow. OK, uh, so the important thing to realize is that green is a hey, in class logged in no matter what. OK, and that will be tracked this this year. Uh, participation and attendance will be tracked unlike it was back in March. Like I said, very, very different. OK. This is kind of a mock schedule. Uh, the players don't have this yet. I'm going to give this to them today. Uh, this is this is what I would do, whether I was a player or, or excuse me, whether I was a student or a parent in this situation. This is kind of the schedule that I would get on. And all research shows that the only way NTI works, and this is from kindergarten all the way up to, to 12th grade, the only way that anyone can be successful in NTI is if they have a schedule. They have some kind of daily routine. And so this is what I would do uh, for, for my kid. Um, again. Kind of takes it through this, through what they what a typical day would look like. Uh, I would say this: I highly recommend guys are logging on 10 to 15 minutes early, just in case there's a big issue that they need to try to, to, to figure out. Um, this this needs to take place for sure. Okay, um, but again, if you if this this is not the Bible, uh, this is just a recommendation. It's just an idea. You and your sons can kind of come up with ones that work for you guys specifically. I know we have some kids that are nocturnal that won't go to bed until two or three o'clock in the morning and, and they'll be fine to wake up for class. And hey, whatever works, works. Uh, but this is just kind of an idea for you guys. OK, this is the NTI digital dashboard. Feel, feel free to take a, a pause the video, take a screenshot for this link up here. That's what uh, that's what the information that you need to have. Uh, and this is a one stop shop for all things Fern Creek NTI 2.0. Okay. All right, let's delve into football. <clears throat> I'll try to be quick and brief. I'm, I'm probably running behind as is. Uh, KHSA met last week. They approved football. They put together a plan. Everybody in the state is following that plan, with the exception of JCPS, Odom County, and Lexington School. Uh, though the individual school districts still have independence on this, determining what they do. Therefore, JCPS is meeting tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, it will be online. You can watch it on the YouTube channel. You can hear about all the, the, the things they're going to talk about. Um, if they do approve sports uh, and we are a go, at any moment's notice, the state, the governor at any point can shut us down. I think we know that. We watch enough news. We see what's going on. We understand that this is a delicate, fluid, transitional situation. At any moment, we could be shut down indefinitely. Okay. Here's what you need to know if we do pass and if, if they do allow football. Um, take a look at this. Feel free to, to pause it. A couple of things I want to, to be to kind of throw out there. Um, we If they approve it, our first game would no longer be September 11th. Our first scrimmage would be September 12th. Our first official game would be September 18th, okay, if it's approved. Um, they would not allow us to do contact for quite a while. We would have to uh, work out in our, our gear for a little bit before we, we did contact because that's the fear, right, is that contact is how we would, uh, we would uh, uh, con contract uh, the virus. Um, so they want to limit that as much as possible 
uh, until we know that what we're doing is, is safe and it's correct. Okay? Other things you can expect uh, if things are passed, these are things that I've kind of alluded to you guys and I've tried to, I've tried to prepare you guys for. Um, we've talked about the mass situation. We're going to talk more about that here in a moment. Um, locker room access. Locker rooms are pretty much just going to be for storage. It's not going to be a place where we're going to congregate and hang out. Um, you know, we'll have plans in place for that. Obviously, fans are going to be limited. Uh, we're going to have one lower level game per week. All these things are things that we've discussed. If you have any questions specific to these items uh, that, that aren't answered tonight at 7 o'clock, call me and we'll discuss. I can probably walk you through those. Okay? And the truth be told, there are still a lot of, of, of unknowns that we need to have answered as well. Okay. All right. Here's the part that I don't like. Um, I'm 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 very organized and, and very OCD about things. I like things to be a certain way. You guys know that I like to communicate changes to you. Um, if practice is approved for tomorrow, uh, then our schedule will change a, li a little bit. OK, um, when we are allowed to go full team, it would be from six to eight thirty. If we're allowed to go full team tomorrow, it'll be 6 to 8.30. There's a chance that we won't be allowed to go full team, and we're still going to have to do the things we've been doing with pods of 10, no more than 50 guys at a time, so forth and so on. If that's the case, times will not change this week, but we will practice on Friday and Saturday. Uh, Saturday was supposed to be the field clinic day anyway. We still want to bring those guys in. Uh, but we, we are supposed to have 11 practices before we put on uh, – our gear for a, for a contest, for a scrimmage or a game. Um, one thing we've never had to worry about because we practice after school has been sunset and, and losing daylight. Uh, we're going to continue to practice in the evening. I think that's what's best for our kids and, and for you guys. You all work. Uh, we don't want guys trying to find, you know, talking it or trying to find rides with each other. In this kind of situation with COVID and whatnot, we, we want these guys to be, to be limited in, in what they're exposed to. Um, so it, it makes sense for us to continue to practice at the time that we're practicing. Uh, it allows guys to get jobs after the school day is over, all that, okay? Um, but with that being said, because of sunset change, it changes in, in, in daylight, we will have to adjust time. So it won't be, you know, uh, set in stone, um, you know, for the duration of the season, but hopefully we'll be able to communicate that with you guys uh, regularly. OK, uh, but understand that there will be a time change. We will move it up 30 minutes, probably in mid-September. And then we'll eventually shorten practice when we get to late September and we really start losing out on the daylight. OK, one thing I do, do want to make a point of is virtual film sessions. Um, I'm not saying this is going to happen yet. Again, I want to eliminate as many opportunities for exposure as possible. So film will probably look way different this year. Um, what we're going to ask is every year we've done film on Saturday mornings, we've done a body check, so forth and so on. If we're not allowed, if we don't feel comfortable bringing in our kids for Saturday practices or for Saturday film sessions, we won't do that. But we will ask for any virtual time to be protected time. That's going to be a practice. It's just not going to be in person. So we need those. We need our guys logged in, whether it's on their phone or on their Chromebook. Um, and participating in this stuff, it's we're going to count it as a practice, and that that needs to be that needs to be clear, clear uh, to, to everybody. Um, we had a, we canceled practice one day last week because of the weather, and yet we still had five or six guys that said, "Oh well, you know, my mama said I had to do this, or you know, I had to go to dinner with blah blah blah." Um, it's still practice time, and that's the only time that we ask to be you know protected and, and to be our time. Um, so we're just asking you guys to help with that that does impact their success on the field uh, directly, okay? All right, moving along, a couple more things here. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, there's nothing wrong with opting out. Uh, as we now approach, uh, this is something that's gonna be a ser more and more serious and more and more prevalent. I, no one's going to judge you uh, or your sons for opting out of playing football this season. We all have different feelings on this thing. Uh, if I was a parent, I would probably be feeling the way that some of you guys do, and I would probably not feel 100% comfortable with it. Um, if my kid really loved the game, I, I would be torn. I, I don't know what I would do. Um, what I will ask of you, though, if there is a decision to opt out, we would need to know as soon as possible, preferably no later than Saturday the 20th. Okay? Uh, that's for many reasons, the biggest reason of which is uh, – 
helping us prepare for the season. And, you know, we have 90, 90 something guys in the team and we, we can only dress 60 guys per week. Um, if your son was going to decide to play after the 29th, it, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even be eligible for the first two contests because he wouldn't have the 11 days in before, before he was uh, approved to play. So, um, there's something to keep in mind, you know, and if this is something that you, again, no one would ostracize, criticize, you know, any kind of other size, your kid or you for holding your kid out. That's, that's clearly your own decision. At the end of the day, that's what it boils down to for us is, is choice. Um, what I will say would helps out <clears throat> these helmet shields. Um, you know, I'm ordering this through a third party. We don't make any money. This is not a fundraiser. This is not a ploy to get you to buy stuff. Uh, helmet shields, they're, they're, they're coming back with some good results uh, in terms of how they're uh, preventing contraction of, of, of COVID or from bacteria getting into, into other people's spaces. Um, not all of our kids have this, the same helmet, so uh, your sons will probably need to know what kind of helmet they have before ordering. That's stuff that we can help them out with down the road, okay? Helmet shields are seem and they're, they're anywhere from $25 to $45, but God forbid you guys spend that money and then they, they use it for one game. Okay. Um, I think the more economical idea is the gator. Uh, that's the thing that wraps around their whole face. Um, some are more effective than, that, than others. The thicker you, you get, the better. Um, but even so, just having that on is better than not having anything at all. And guys play with gators on during cold weather games. Um, but, it, you know, that does add a different element to it since there, our first couple of games aren't going to be cold. Our first few games will probably be still pretty warm. Um, so th this is all about choice. These are things guys can do that we help helps them out. They will be required to wear a mask on the sideline. Um, so I think the Gators are nice because they, they go around their face uh, whenever they're ready to go in game. If they don't want to play with it on, they pull it down. It's now kind of around their neck. It's not tight. It's not going to choke them. It's not a choking hazard. It's break, breakable material, uh, but it's down here. And now I can go out there and play. And then in between timeouts, when I'm on the sideline, boom, I pull it up. Okay. Again, it's, a, it's something that I saw in, in Indiana this past weekend that I, I thought was pretty effective. Okay, uh, player fees. I'm sure you guys are here, sick of hearing about it. Um, Friday, Friday, Friday will be the absolute last day. We are going to know something about this season this week, which means that I have to order this week. Please make sure things are done by Friday. If not, please communicate that with me. Um, whether that means that we just won't order things for your son or, or if we need to figure out some kind of arrangement, we can do so. OK, but just make sure that you communicate that with me. Uh, we want our guys to all have their team gear. We want them to have make sure that they, they can they can do team meals. Um, just give me a call if there are any issues. OK, and then lastly, uh, the last couple of reminders. Uh, again, we've talked about weather. Make sure that time is protected for us if you could. And then lastly, physicals. Uh, we're, we're down about 20 to 25 guys that still need them. Uh, don't let those physicals lapse, especially when practice officially get, begins tomorrow, uh, because they need every day. Every day is going to count towards that 11, uh, and they can't miss practices if they plan on playing in that first round. So, um, guys, that's all I got for you. Hope is greater than fear. I choose hope. Let's hope for a great season. Let's hope for some good decisions tonight. As always, give me a call if you need anything. Coach A will out.